Hey everyone, I'm just waiting for more people to come in. I'm just uh, gonna wait a bit, just letting people in the room, then we'll get started. Okay, we'll get started. If more people come in, then we'll let them in. So <clears throat> I'm Michael Johnson, and I'm gonna be your professor for uh, this course for the semester. I'm just gonna go through, just forgot that I have to go through the syllabus before content. So I'll just get that up. So, So this course, it's it's gonna have term tests, final exam, quizzes, and assignments. So that's gonna be how the course is structured. Uh, then the TLP goes through more details about that. So um, January 26th will be a term test one, um, chapters one to four. We're going to one through one to two today. So that is, um, two wins, so that is not next week, but the week after. And then term test two will be chapters five to eight, February 16th. And then March 16th will be the quiz. So it's more of like a review quiz of chapters one to eight. And then March 30th will be term test three, which is uh, chapters nine to 13. And then you're gonna, then we're gonna do, this is gonna be assignment due on April 13th. You're going to answer the question, what are the macroeconomic benefits of entrepreneurship? So you're going to find benefits of entrepreneurship and link it to material from chapters 1 to 18. So uh, you're going to use the course material that you learned so far to uh, find why entrepreneurship is so important. Because a lot of the course revolves around a lot of entrepreneurial incentives and how beneficial it is. And the final exam will be chapters 14 to 18. So that's why the final exam is only weighted at 25% because it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's only going to cover like 14, chapter 14 to 18. That's why. And uh, the term tests will be similar to the final exam. So it's um, each test goes through um, a quarter of the course, basically. And that includes the final exam. So that's, uh, that's the crux of it. Um, so I'm going to bring up the PowerPoint. I'm just going to...
Okay, so I'll bring up the PowerPoint. So we're going to go through a lot of the economic theory, positive economics, normative economics, opportunity costs, trade offs. Um, opportunity cost and economic growth, international trade. So we're gonna go through facing trade-offs, opportunity costs, choosing a little more or less, and the influence of incentives. We're gonna go through specialization and trade, the effectiveness of markets and the role of governments, the production standard of living, money and inflation, and inflation and employment trade off. So, let's introduce. Okay, so I'll bring it back. So economics is, is concerned with the efficient use of scarce resources to obtain maximum, maximum wants. Because there's unlimited wants in society. So people want unlimited things, but they only have limited resources. So you need to figure out what you want most because you don't, you can't get everything. So that, that's the whole, uh, it's all about decision-making. You gotta decide what's most important to you. And because you can't have everything. Like it's like, um, like, do you want a house like most? Yeah, I'll, po I'll post it after um, after the class. So, like, uh, what do you want most? Like, do you want a house most, or a yacht most, or or a plane most? Right? You can't have it all. Like, you have to choose. Uh, and most people can't afford a plane or a yacht, but you have to choose. Like you can't have like the snazzy uh, like Ferrari and have a house unless you're rich. But most people have to choose. Like some Ferraris are in hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, of value. And then it's houses now, like the average house price in the GTA is about a million, million dollars. So you can choose, you could buy a Ferrari or you could buy a million dollar house. So. You have, you have to make a choice was more important because like the normal person they can't even afford either really so, but if you had the means to afford a house then you probably have to choose yeah so yeah scarcity of economic resources restricts options from cars choices there's no free lunch so that means that like you need to choose what's more important and like you need to work um, to provide for what you want to buy. And then opportunity costs of a choice is what is for God for that choice. So, so you going to school right now, the opportunity cost of going to school is lost wages from working. And, uh, and also the, the books you pay for, the tuition, the residents, all of that's put into opportunity costs. So all of those costs are put together. So like, I'll write it down on the PowerPoint. So like, 
So um, opportunity cost of going to school is uh, lost wages from not working plus tuition plus food plus driving to school not right now <laughs> and then um also residents if you are living close to this so yeah like like this like that that would be all opportunity costs for going to school so yeah, so likely, let's say, yeah. So like all those are put together and any other expenses that you have. So purposeful behavior, people pursue opportunities in order to increase their utility which is the satisfaction a person gets from consuming a good or service. So marginal analysis comparing benefits and costs, extra additional trade-in, for example, marginal costs versus the marginal benefit of any additional years. The scientific method observe, formulate a hypothesis, test the hypothesis, accept, reject, or modify the hypothesis, and then continue to test the hypothesis if necessary. So, um, So the other thing is equal assumption is ceteris paribus. So like uh, a lot of what we're doing in economics, we're assuming that everything else is not moving. So we're assuming that let's say if we're testing what supply is on demand, like what supply causes on demand side, everything else, everything else is kept the same. In that case, we just look at supply and demand. And we do graphs for that. Um, microeconomics is focused on like businesses and households. Macroeconomics is focused on the economy as a whole. Positive economics uh, focuses on like number of relationships for cause and effect. Normative economics focuses on what the economy should be without like using number arguments. So limited income, income is finite even for the wealthiest. So even, even rich people have limited income. Then unlimited wants, uh, wants change over time. And yeah. So Canada's average income is $47,250 per year. And that's fourth highest on this chart. So uh, United States, Switzerland and Norway come Higher, like have higher incomes per capita. And uh, so these are the best, uh, best countries in terms of like living standards. And then Congo is, is the bottom of this chart, Rwanda, Mali. Um, usually these countries far below, like Mali, Rwanda, and Congo, like they're like war torn countries. Um, they're usually under and like the third world. So they're they're in massive poverty, um, and they might they're under probably probably war, like Pakistan, etc. Um, and then the countries at the top they usually have democracy. Uh, they are peaceful, usually. Uh, they're first world developed but like as you go down the list there's more conflict for the most part um and then yeah conflict brings inequality yeah and then they're usually more autocratic so they uh they mostly have dictatorships so like china um pakistan mali Rwanda, congo yeah for the most part so the budget line um, shows the combinations of two products the consumer can purchase with a specific money income. So uh, in this case, 
this shows that if you used all your income to buy DVDs, you could buy, so you do, so like I'll ask the class, um, if you used all your income to buy just DVDs, um, how many DVDs would you get? Six. That's great, excellent. And then what about um, if you used all your income to buy books, how many books could you buy? 12. That's great. Yeah, and then um, then you can buy anything in between. Um, it just all has to add up to 120. So like three, uh, so, so if you bought three DVDs, it'd be three times $20 per DVD. And if you bought six bucks, it'd be six times um, $10 per buck. So you get um, three times 20 is 60 plus 60. So it matches the budget. So anything on the line will match your budget. But anything under the line will hit will be under the budget, but you don't want to do that because uh, because there's going to be unemployment if you're under the line. It's probably a recession because they're not using um, resources to the maximum use. So if they're under the line. And if you're on the line, then the economy is probably doing well. And um, if you're above the line, it's probably all been expansion. The economy's growing. Like if the line shifts out, like the line has to shift out in that case for it to be um, economy's growing expansion. But if the line doesn't shift out, it's not possible to uh so like you couldn't you couldn't have anything here because you don't have the money to get here but you have the money to get here here um right now because the line is there but if the line goes out here you can you can buy this quantity but the line's not there yet so you need So yeah, I'll erase this just because. So yeah, the um, so what I wrote here. So society's economic problem. We only we have scarce resources. Like we only have a certain amount of land, like the Earth, right? Like we haven't we haven't gotten space travel yet, so we're stuck with the Earth. We only have the Earth. That's it's not unlimited. It's limited space. Then we have labor, human capital. There's only like seven billion. Uh, individual units of human capital right? and then capital investment we only have so much of that like we only have like uh, um, so like the wealth in the United States is probably 20 trillion US dollars like roughly um, so like we only have that in the United States that's the fix that's the capital that we have so it's scarce we can't we have limits on that so entrepreneurs, economic functions, or takes initiative, makes business decisions, innovates and bears risk. So production possibilities model assumes full employment, fixed resources, fixed technology and two goods, consumer goods and goods. So yeah, if you're gonna graph this, um, this is how you graph it. So uh, so like if, so for A, I'm gonna ask the class, what, how many robots and how many pizzas would you have for A? You'd have zero pizzas, uh, 10 robots. Uh, close, so it's in thousands, so 10,000 robots. But good, good, good guess, yeah. So yeah. Um, just make sure the units are right, but that was good. Good job. Uh, then B, what about B, anybody? One hundred thousand pizzas for nine thousand robots. Yeah, that's great. So yeah, like um, 
9,000 robots, and then 100,000 pieces. Great. Good job. And then what about C? Seven thousand robots to three uh, three hundred thousand pizzas. A close would be two hundred thousand pizzas. I'm struggling with this. Oh, it's okay. So um, the graph, yeah, like I agree. The graph looks uh, the graph. It kind of looks like an optical illusion, sort of. Um. So yeah, like putting a line down here, putting a line here. Um, this would be 7,000 robots, like you got that one. And then you bring this down, it'd be 200,000 pizzas. But yeah, it kind of looks like, it does look like an optical illusion, sort of, yeah. Um, good job. What about D, everybody? Four thousand robots and uh, three hundred thousand pizzas. That's correct. That's great. Yeah. So there you go. He is uh, four thousand robots and then three hundred thousand pizzas. And then what about E, everybody? Zero robots and. Uh, for a hundred thousand pieces. Good job. Excellent. So yeah, using these um, using these lines here, using a vertical line and a horizontal line, it's a good way to uh, visualize what um, like if it's like you know what number would be for robots, what number would be for pizzas. Like doing it this way, it's a good way to visualize it because like. Some of it looks like kind of like an optical illusion. So just pinpoint what the numbers are. So that, that's a good um, that's a good strategy for any assessment. Yeah. So the law of increasing opportunity cost makes the PPC concave. So um, the PPC is always concave um, because opportunity costs are always increasing. So yeah, like what are they saying unattainable is above the line. So you don't have enough money to get there. So W, you would not be able to get there. Because you just, you don't have the capacity to get W. But you can get on the line or you can get below the line because you have enough money. So optimal allocations, MB equals MC. So uh, 200,000 pizzas and then 10,000 robots. So yeah, you wanna get um, in the middle of here. So, so this is optimal. If, if MB equals MC, it's sufficient. That's where there's like 10,000 robots and then um, 200,000 pieces. Yeah. So like that's where you want to be, right there. And that that spot here, that's um, that's that's the same as being on the line here. It's efficient. And unemployment. Um, the economy is not operating at full employment when the point is inside the production possibilities curve. So if it is in the blue section here, anywhere in the blue section below the line, that's when it's not at full employment. There's unemployment in that case. So then uh, there's more output if you're going closer, if you're going more towards full employment. So if you go closer to the line, so if you go from the blue here and you go closer to the line, it becomes more, uh, more employment. Yeah. So 
So then, so, so you right there, that's when there's unemployment or inefficiency. So if you're below the line right here, uh, there's inefficiency slash unemployment. And then a growing economy has increases in factor supplies, economic growth shipped out of the PBC, improved factor quality and technological advances. So yeah, this is another good example of it. So this is when there's uh, economic growth. When the line ships out like this is economic growth. And, and anything to the right of the line is attainable now, that up to the blue, the new blue line. So you have enough uh, resources to get there. So yeah, like um, this is economic growth, increase in employment, and you can afford more stuff, basically. And then, um, so it's important to avoid bias in economics. So uh, start with the data and then reason up from there. Um, don't start with the theory and then look at the data because you'll be biased towards trying to find it to match your theory. Try to start with the data and then find your theory from there because that'll reduce bias. And then correlation to causation. So it, if one thing goes up and the other thing goes up, it doesn't mean that um, the, the other thing causes the one thing. So like if... Uh, Let's say, um, let's say like uh, drinking apple juice um, increases, then like the Doug Ford, uh, Doug Ford's like poll numbers go up. Like it's not like they're they are correlated, but one doesn't cause the other because they're like they're totally unrelated. Like uh, drinking apple juice is not related to politics. Yeah. That's why, like, um, uh, correlation does not mean causation. Because there is, like, there's this one thing, it's like um, eating ice cream um, is positively correlated with, like, deaths in the northern. No, I think, I think it was correlated with plane crashes in US, so I think it was something like that. But um, ice cream doesn't cause plane crashes because they are completely unrelated events. Yeah. Like you're not gonna cause a plane crash by eating ice cream, it's just, uh, yeah. They're correlated, they might be correlated, but I heard something like that. But they don't cause each other. There's just no way. So that's a big part of it. So, um, so we will do an activity. So which uh, which one do you want to do? Gold Quest, Fishing Frenzy, Crypto Hack, Tower Defense, Battle Royale, Big Cafe, Factory Racing, Crazy Kingdom, or Classic? So let's see which one.
tower defense. Okay. Um, okay, we'll do tower and then we'll do gold quest. Um, we'll do gold quest the next time, okay? Oh, we'll just do tower defense right now. So click on this link and then, um, oh shoot, click on this link and then you can log in.
Great job, everyone. Great participation. Yeah, excellent job. Uh, so, so um, we're going to go through graphs and their meanings. So, uh, yeah. So this is a consumption graph. So it shows that um, that people spend more than half of their income on consumption in this case. Um, it shows that here. So, for example, two hundred fifty. A dollars of consumption comes from a four hundred dollar income in this case, then uh, two hundred dollars of consumption comes from three hundred dollar income, and so on. So, more than half of the income is spent on consumption. So, direct relationship is when the x-axis goes up, and then the y-axis goes up. So, like, like more, uh, more accurately the independent variable goes up and then the dependent variable goes up. So it's direct. That's what you call a direct relationship. Also like when the independent variable goes down, the dependent variable goes down. Right, so they do the same thing basically. And then inverse relationship is when, so I'll erase this. So, so what happens is the independent goes up, the dependent goes down inverse. It's like the opposite basically. So when the independent goes down, the dependent goes up inverse. Yeah. So, slopes. So, the slope of this is 0 0.5. So, in this case, the starts at 50 here. So, 50 is where it hits the y axis, the vertical, and it goes up by 0 0.5. So, so, in this case, like, uh, so 50, let's put it in 100, 50 plus 0 0.5 times 100, that's 100. So it's 50 plus 50 equals 100. And let's put in 200, so 50 plus 100 equals 150. And then 50 plus 0 0.5 times 300 equals um, 200. So 50 plus 150 equals 200. And then 50 plus 0 0.5 times 400 equals 200. So 50 plus 200 equals 250. So that, that's, how, that's how the graph is formed. And then why it, it starts at 50 is because if you did, So zero income is when it's at 50 consumption. So even with no income, you consume 50. So, so that's probably because of government assistance. So welfare, or, or maybe you scavenge, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. So this is, how so this chart is good on showing how if the ticket price goes up the attendance goes down so because um less and less people are more less interested in going to the game so in this case um so if so based on this so 
negative 10 and 4, that means that uh, for every $10 increase in the ticket price, four less people are in attendance. So, so it's more expensive for them. So that's the that's the slope of it. So um, that's what happens. Or if like, you know, instead of this, like if Doug Ford shuts down all attendance, then, you know, attendance goes to zero. So that's kind of, so that's, um, so we're not letting that happen. Like in this case, we're assuming everything else stays constant, like any other sort of factor, like, the only way this this graph works is everything else doesn't move. Like we're only looking at attendance and ticket price, so everything else in the background doesn't matter. You know, team quality. If the team's gonna win the championship, if Kobe's on their team, if LeBron's on their team, if Kawhi's on their team, it doesn't matter. Like we we don't look at all any of that. Any all of that is held constant. We um those things we, we don't think about because we're just focusing on attendance and ticket price. Those other factors are held constant. So we're not looking at any of those other things. These things, attendance and ticket price are the only things that are moving in this case. Everything else is held the same. And that's the only way we can we can look at it. So if it's a vertical line, The slope is infinite, so that means undefined, so we don't know what it is. Like, no one can calculate what it is. If you could, if you could figure it out, then you'd probably win. Like, you'd probably win a Nobel, like a Nobel Prize, probably. But, um, so slope is zero when it's just horizontal like this. But, yeah. Um, then... So this is the equation for um, the line. So Y is a dependent variable. A is the vertical intercept when it hits this the vertical. And then B is a slope. So A is the, if B is a slope, it's like how, how much it's going up. And then X is the independent variable. So, yeah. so in this case, um, so can somebody, tell me what the uh, vertical intercept is of this equation. Oh, 0.5. Oh, that's, um, that's the slope. What's the vertical intercept? 50. 50. Great, 50. That's great. Good job. So then 0 0.5 is the vertical intercept. The, slope. Yeah. Great job. Excellent. Thank you. So then with that, how would you find the uh, vertical intercept of this one? Anybody want to take a guess? A vertical intercept of this one. So it's going to be 50. And what about the slope? What's the slope? 2.5. Great. Yeah, negative 2.5. That's great. And is it a direct relationship or is it an inverse relationship? Inverse. Great, excellent, perfect, that's great. Great job. So then um, slope of a nonlinear curve, slope always changes, must use a line tangent to the curve to find the slope. So um, this would be a nonlinear curve. And then to find a slope, you gotta do a tangent line. So that's the instantaneous rate of change. We won't have to worry about that. So, Graphs go through a chemical relationship. We look through positive slope lines, negative slope lines, and then um, the tangents. 
So good job, everybody. So we'll uh, I'm just gonna. So I'm gonna show a video. One second. Or some type of a hunter gatherer and you're trying to figure out how much of your time to spend hunting and how much of your time to spend gathering so let's think about the different scenarios here and the trade-offs that they involve and just for simplicity we're going to assume that when you're talking about hunting the only animal around you to hunt for are these little rabbits and when we talk about gathering the only thing that you can gather are some type of berries that'll keep our conversation a little bit simpler so let's think about all of the scenarios so first let's first scenario scenario a and let's say, so let's call this the number of rabbits, the number of rabbits you can get. And then let's call this the number of berries. Let's do this column is the number of berries that you can get. So if you were to spend your entire day going after rabbits, all your free time out, you know, making sure you have time to sleep and get dressed and all of those type of things, let's say that you can actually get five rabbits on average in a given day. But if you spend all your time getting rabbits, you're not going to have any time to get berries. So you're going to be able to get zero berries. Now let's say that you were to only try to, let's say you were to allocate a little bit more time to get berries and a little bit less time to get rabbits. So we'll call that scenario B. We'll call scenario B the reality where you have enough time to get four rabbits on average. And when you do that, all of a sudden you're able to get 100 you're able to get 100 berries. And when we do the, these different scenarios, we're assuming that everything else is equal. You're not changing the amount of time you have either hunting or gathering. You're not changing the amount of sleep. You're not changing your techniques for hunting rabbits or hunting berries, or you're not somehow looking to do other things with your time. So all other things are equal. And the general term for this, and it sounds very fancy if you were to say it in a conversation, is ceteris paribus. Ceteris Ceteris paribus, paribus, which literally means, so anytime someone says, oh, and you know, ceteris paribus, we assume this variable changes or whatever else, they're saying we're assuming everything else is being held equal. So ceteris, ceteris means, ceteris means all other things, other, other things. You're probably familiar with et cetera, it's the same word essentially, other things and paribus Paribus, other things equal. So you're not, when you're going from scenario A to scenario B, you're not changing the amount of time you're sleeping. You're not changing uh, somehow the geography where you are. You're in a dramatic way. You're not changing. Uh, you're not changing the tools you use or the technology. Everything else is equal. The only variable you're changing is how much time you allocate to finding rabbits versus finding berries. So let's do some more scenarios, assuming ceteris paribus. So let me do scenario C. You could, on average, have enough time to get three rabbits. But if you get three rabbits, then all of a sudden, you will only be able to get, or you will be able to get, or if you're only getting three rabbits, you're now able to get 180 berries. And let's do a couple more. I'm going to do two more scenarios. So let's say scenario D. If you reduce the amount of time you spend getting rabbits, so you get two rabbits, now all of a sudden you, can, you have enough time, on average, to get 240 berries. And then, let's say you spend even less time, let's say you spend even less time getting hunting for rabbits, on average, then you have even more time for berries, and so you're able to get 280 berries. And then I'll do one more scenario here. So let's say scenario F, and let's call these the scenarios. Scenarios. Scenario A, A through F. So scenario F is you spend all your time looking for berries, in which case, on average, you're going to be able to get 300 berries a day. But since you have no time for rabbits, you aren't going to get any rabbits. So what I want to do is plot these. And on one axis, I'll have the number of rabbits. And on the other axis, I'll have the number of berries. So let me do it right over here. So this axis, I will call this my rabbit axis, rabbits. And we'll start, that'll be 0. And then this will be 1, 2, 3, 4. And then that will be 5 rabbits. And then in this axis, this axis, I will do the berries. I will do the berries. 
So this right over here, let's make this 100 berries. This is 200 berries, 200 berries, and then this is 300 berries. And so this is my berries, my berries axis. Now let's plot these points, these different scenarios. So first we have scenario A. Scenario A, maybe I should have done all of these colors in that scenario A color. Scenario A, five rabbits, zero berries. Five rabbits, zero berries. We are right over there. That is scenario A. Scenario B, scenario B, four rabbits, 100 berries. Four rabbits, 100 berries. That's right over there. That's 100 berries. So that is scenario B. Scenario C, scenario C, three rabbits, 180 berries. Three rabbits, 180. Let's see, this would be 150. 180 will be like right over there. So three, three, if you have time for three rabbits, you have time for about 180 berries on average. So this is scenario C. And then scenario D, we have in white. If you have time for two rabbits, you have time for 240 berries. So that is right around there. So this is scenario D, because this is 250. Actually, it'll be a little bit lower. So this would be 250. So 240 is a little bit lower than that. So it'll be like right over there. That is scenario D. Scenario E, you have, if you have time for one rabbit, you have time for 280 berries. So that gets us right about, right about there. That is scenario E. And then finally, scenario F, you are spending all of your time looking for berries. You have no time for rabbits. So all of your time for berries, no time for rabbits. Zero rabbits, 300 berries. That's right over there. So this is scenario F. So what all of these points represent, these are all points, and now this is going to be a fancy word, but it's a very simple idea. These are all points on you as a hunter-gatherer on your production possibilities frontier. Because if we draw a line, I just arbitrarily picked these scenarios, although I guess you could on average get four and a half rabbits, on average, on average get three and a half rabbits, and then you'd have a different number of berries. So these are all points on the different combinations between the trade-offs of rabbits and berries. So let me connect all of these. Let me connect them in a color that I haven't used yet. So let me connect them. And what you see, it should just be one curve. So I'll do it as a dotted line. It's easier for me to draw a dotted curve than a straight curve. So this right over here, this curve right over here, represents all the possible possibilities of combinations of rabbits and berries. I've only picked certain of them, but you could have a scenario right over here. Maybe we could call that scenario G, where on average, the amount of time you've allocated, on average, you would get four and a half rabbits. So some days you'd get four rabbits, and every other day you'd get five rabbits. So maybe it averages out to four and a half rabbits. And then maybe it looks like you would get about 50 berries in that situation. So all of these are possibilities. You don't have to just jump from four rabbits to five rabbits, or maybe you know, you're spending, uh, maybe in this scenario, you're spending uh, seven hours, and in this scenario, you spend eight hours. But you could spend seven hours in a minute, or seven hours in a second. So anything in between is possible and all of those possibilities all of those possibilities are on this curve so these five scenarios actually these six scenarios that we've talked about so far these are just these are just scenarios on on this curve and that curve we call once again fancy term simple idea our production production possibilities 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 I put two eyes in there by accident. Possibilities, possibilities frontier. Because it shows all of the different possibilities we can do. We can get three rabbits and 180 berries, two rabbits and 240 berries and 240 berries. What we cannot do is something that's beyond this. So for example, we can't get a scenario like this. So this right over here would be impossible. Impossible. Let me scroll over to the right a little bit. Let me scroll. See my scrolling thing. Okay. So this right over here is impossible. This point right over here, where I'm getting five rabbits and 200 berries. If I'm getting five rabbits, I'm spending all my time on rabbits. I have no time for berries. Or another way to think of it, if I'm getting 200 berries, I don't have enough time to get five rabbits. So this point is impossible. This point would be impossible. Any point that's on this side of the curve is impossible. Now, any any point that's on this side of the curve, you can kind of view it as inside the curve or below the curve or to the left of the curve, 
all of these points right over here are possible. All of these points right over here are these points. For example, it is very easy for me to get one rabbit and 200 berries. So that right over there is possible. Now, is that optimal? No, because if I were to really work properly, I could be, I could get I could get many more berries or I could get more rabbits. For if I have 200 berries, I could get more rabbits or if I'm concerned if I only want one rabbit, I can get more berries. So this is possible. All of the points down here are possible, but they aren't optimal. They are not efficient. So the points in here, the points in here will say that they are not they are not efficient. Maybe somehow I'm not using my resources optimally to, to do this type of thing when I'm over here. Maybe I'm just not being optimally uh, focused or whatever it might be. If you're talking about a factory setting, when you're talking about maybe deciding to make one thing or another, then maybe you just aren't using your, the, the resources in an optimal way. Now, all the points on the frontier, these are efficient. You're doing the most you can do. Right now, we're not making any judgment between whether any of these possibilities are better than any other possibility. All we are saying is that you are doing the most that you can do. Any of these things, you are making the most use of your time. So that's a good video. It really goes through production possibilities curve. Uh, as you said, frontier, it's the same thing. Um, but yeah, uh, it goes through very, very well. Yeah. Um, when I was in Laurier, we we always said curve. Yeah. So we'll go through laissez-faire capitalism, the command system, and the market system, and then the five fundamental questions and invisible hand and circular flow model. So we'll go through decentralized use of markets and centralized government control. So good question. Um, there is a textbook, it's macroeconomics 15th edition. We don't have to get it, like it's not mandatory. Um, it's not mandatory at all. Uh, It's not mandatory at all, um, but if you do want to get it, you can. It's up to you. Uh, I'm going to give you no, no. You don't need the textbook. The textbook is um, don't worry about purchasing it. If you want to purchase it, you can, but uh, I'll give you all the work for free. Um, yeah, like I know it's it's such a big cost for everybody. And you're already paying tuition, so um, don't worry about buying the textbook. Um, I'll uh, I'll give you all the questions that you need, all the practice you need, because I have access to the textbook um, from school. So I'll give you everything that I have from the textbook. So laissez-faire capitalism is the ideal economy for some people. So, no problem. So, it's it's like a libertarian economy. So, um, so the government is only there to for police and for law. So yeah, like they only have a national defense, police, and judges. That's it. There's nothing else. There's no education. There's no health care. Just national defense, police, and legal. The problem with this is uh, you can't get OHEP. OHEP's great because it's free health care from the government. Um, so you wouldn't be able to bring your health card to get, you know, a checkup from your doctor or get, you know, medical care for free for you know so let's say you contract a respiratory illness you can't get medical care for free um also you couldn't go to school like you couldn't go to school yeah so there's a lot of things that would be left out uh, if if uh you were a laissez-faire command system is socialism or communism so government ownership of resources so the 
the government makes all the decisions. North Korea, Cuba, and Myanmar are like that. And the market system is um, some government control, decentralized decision making. Systems found in much of the world. So Canada and the US have a market system. Private markets are a dominant for of course. Private ownership of resources and self-interest. So market system has private property, freedom of enterprise, freedom of choice, self-interest, competition and market resources. So, um, the most, most market focused economies in the world are Hong Kong, Singapore, and Australia. Then Canada, the United States, and Botswana come in after. And then Israel, Spain, Italy are more a mix between command and market. And then Cambodia, Greece, and Argentina, they lean more to the command economy side. And then Mozambique, Algeria, and North Korea are more command economies. So market system, the, there's a lot of technology and capital goods uh, to uh, provide efficiency in production. And uh, yeah. So, You won't, there's no way uh, an economy would work without money because you can't just, you can't just trade goods. You need some sort of money because like, for example, like you wouldn't be able to like, like you're not going to buy a house without money, right? Like you don't have enough, like, un like let's say you have your car and you have your clothes like that won't that won't equal the value of a house. You need some sort of money to trans to do the transaction. Like you don't have enough um, assets like in value to buy a house because the house is the most valuable asset you own, right? So you need money. Money is important for transactions. So it's important to have government because you need to have an intervention strategy if there's a market failure. So let's say um, there's a recession, you need government to come in to pay for businesses to survive if they can't operate. Like for example, lockdowns, like once the, uh, the government locks uh, businesses down, they need to pay businesses money to survive because they don't have revenue coming in if they're locked down, like gyms, for example, right? They can do, gyms are struggling because they aren't making money off of uh, memberships uh, when there's lockdowns, it, like assuming that the memberships are canceled. So the government has to intervene to um, keep them alive. If the government didn't intervene, then these, uh, these gyms would go bankrupt. So yeah, there needs to be some sort of government intervention like and also indoor dining, like you need to give money to restaurants to survive because they shut down indoor dining. The government, the government needs to intervene to save these companies. So government intervention is very important, especially during the pandemic because of the shutdowns. So the five fundamental questions are what goods and services will be produced? How will the goods and services be produced? Yeah, uh, sorry to hear that, Matt. Uh, where do you work? Like what type of work do you do? I work at a movie theater. Oh, so, sorry to hear that. Yeah, like, uh, sorry that, um, sorry you laid off temporarily until it opened back up or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sorry to hear that, that, that sucks. Um, oh, sorry, Ben, you work at a gym. Um, do you get any sort of uh, assistance like from the government or like, after getting laid off or we can do like the CERB or EI if we want to, but that's basically it. Yeah. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, like um it's important that the government um like if if let's say 
like all these shutdowns are happening like the gyms the movie theaters and all the other places right like if they were just happening because of the pandemic and the government didn't have ei or any other like intervention system uh the economy would go into depression basically like if the government didn't didn't act to give money to these businesses like the economy would probably be in depression so it's, it's very important that the government acts. and i wish they acted more because like um like your jobs there like that's uh it's uh the real jobs and like um the government really should uh should uh do more yeah So yeah, these are the five questions. So what goods and services will be produced? How will the goods and services be produced? Who will get the goods and services? How will the system accommodate change? And how will the system promote progress? So um, the goods and services will be produced at a continuing profit. So total revenue is greater than total cost. Uh, dollar votes reflect wants. So if you're buying, if someone's buying something um, a lot, then the company will produce it more. So like um, in a market economy or laissez-faire economy, um, consumer sovereignty, that means that uh, the customer chooses what is made um, because, because of dollar votes. So if they buy more of something, the company is going to produce more of it. But in the command economy, the government doesn't care about that. They just produce whatever the government wants to produce, which is wrong. Like that, that will not keep the business going. Uh, the customer's always right in a market laissez-faire economy, right? And then the command economy, they just they just don't they don't follow that, and that's why it's it doesn't work. Um, and yeah, so that's a big part. And then you need to be more sufficient by having the best technologies. Um, yeah, and then have cheap price the resources needed. So yeah, there's some um, technological advancements when there's when there's more income and reduced in cost. Uh, and then. So yeah, um, the market system works because there's efficiency in production, resources, and creating technology. And then there's incentives in terms of um, like a big, big incentive is entrepreneurship. And there's a lot of there's a lot of rewards. So um, I'm going to show. So I'm just gonna show this thing. So with um, the big part of the market system is uh, like capital ownership. So um, if you're an entrepreneur, so this is uh, my blog here. Um, I read a lot about entrepreneurship, but if you're an entrepreneur, um, you take home everything over and above what you pay your workers. So like you pay your workers $15 an hour. Um, so example, I want to take this. So like, this is a big, big benefit of the market economy slash laissez-faire economy. So let's say um, workers are paid. So you are an entrepreneur. You pay your workers 15 an hour. You have three workers. So you pay $45 per hour total in labor costs. And then your three workers produce $300 per hour of output. So for other costs, you will make 300 minus, 300 minus 45, and that would be $255 hour 
you make $255 per hour while your workers make 45 for other costs. Entrepreneurship. So this is through entrepreneurship and this is only possible through a market economy. Because in a command economy, the government owns, owns every business so you can't be an entrepreneur. So in a market or laissez-faire economy like in Canada, you can do this through entrepreneurship but in, in a command economy, this is not possible because governments own every company. So that's, um, that's a good breakdown of it. I'll post this in the chat. So I read a lot about um, entrepreneurship, but yeah, um, yeah. So I'll show you that breakdown. It's, it's a good breakdown because being an entrepreneur, you take home everything that um, you make instead of your boss taking like most of what you make. Um, and then you also with the stock market, you can um, like ownership, even owning like ownership is important. Like, like you, can, you can do that through ownership because you take home everything, everything above what they pay their workers. So if you own stock, um, you can benefit that way too. And I talk a lot about stock in my blog too. So um, I've done a whole bunch of breakdowns with that. Um, I'm just gonna sh send this. There's some, sorry. So only in the market economy, like our country, we can uh, benefit from this in a command economy. We could not benefit from this, but those are the investments that I'm in. Um, I just wanted to post that because they're good investments and we can benefit from them in a market economy. Like here, Canada's a market economy. So then the command economies do not work. Like Soviet Union, Eastern Europe and China, it doesn't work because um, like, it just doesn't work because um, there's because the government monopolizes everything and they don't have any competition and they don't listen to consumers and there's no incentive because uh, entrepreneurs are incentivized to build new things because they can take everything above the, what they pay their workers. Um, so they have, a, they have a money incentive to be entrepreneurs, but with... Um, with governments, they just don't because they're all paid salaries, so they don't have any sort of incentive. Um, it's it's a big problem. Command economies just don't work. Yeah. So then the circular flow a model is great because it shows how the economy works. Um, so this, these are certain ways to be entrepreneurs. Um, so a sole proprietorship is a business owned by and operated by a single person that's unincorporated. Partnership is when two or more individuals pull their financial resources and business skills to operate the business and share the profits and losses. Corporation acquires resources, own assets, produce, sell, incur debts, et cetera, et cetera. So these will sh be shown in the, in the circle of the model. So um, in this case, uh, so households, they they work in the factory market. So as entrepreneurs uh, work as capital workers that work as labor and provide land, and then they get rent, wages, interest, and profits from all those activities. And then they use that money to buy stuff through consumption expenditures. And then the stuff is provided to them through them buying it. So the goods and services go back to the households from the product market because the product market makes those goods and services. And the consumption expenditures go into the product market. And then goods and services go into the product market through businesses creating them. And then the product market uh, makes money off of these goods and services. And that goes to businesses. And then businesses pay costs 
costs of production to buy factors, factors of production, and the factors of production go to businesses. So it's a, it's a diagram that never ends. And then in the middle will be government. So government will be in the middle, that's just locked out. So they will, um, so they basically take taxes from both uh, households and businesses, and then they give them subsidies. So a big part of that is um, they kind of, um, what they're supposed to do is uh, so the government takes tax, the government takes taxes. The government takes taxes and then gives subsidies, takes taxes, gives subsidies. And like what they're supposed to do is they're supposed to use um, taxes to pay for education and healthcare and national defense and other governments. Programs. And also you pay for EI and welfare for to reduce inequality. So a big part of what the government does takes taxes and tries to send, tries to use the taxes to level the playing field. Reduce inequality of the poor. They try to, but they're not very successful in that because there's a lot of people in poverty. So that's, that's a big thing. So if you hear like, you know, Bernie Sanders, like his big thing is to, um, improve the government's functioning so they uh, can help the poor better, which is a great um, focus. That's how the government should be. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully um, hopefully they get better at it through like his uh, activism. But uh, so entrepreneurial ability makes everything more efficient. So land, labor and capital are put towards productive uses because there's a lot of incentives that's entrepreneurs. Because like I said, you take everything over and above you pay with your workers. So there's a huge incentive to being an entrepreneur. There's not really a lot of incentive to being an employee because you're only paid a wage. Like you paid, let's say 15, 20, $30 an hour as an employee, like more like 20, like the minimum wage is 15. But even like, I did a breakdown of this. I'm just gonna, Bring it up. So there's not a lot of incentive to being an employee because um, I'm going to show you the breakdown. So, I, so almost everybody makes the minimum wage. So if um, if you're working forty thousand dollars a year, if you make forty thousand dollars a year. You work 40 hours a week for 52 weeks, you'll make $19.23 per hour. So you're making slightly above the minimum wage because the minimum wage in Ontario actually it's 15 now. So you're only making $4.23 above the minimum wage. And then if you make $80,000 a year working 80 hours a week for 52 weeks a year, you'll make $19.23 per hour. So that's like, that's like only that's slightly above the minimum wage. And then like investment bankers in Toronto, like a lot of them make $100,000 a year, but a lot of them work 100 hours per week. So like if you did the breakdown, they'd be making only $19.23 per hour. So there's not a lot of incentive to being an employee salary because um, like the, uh, the person who owns the company is taking everything above what they're paying you, like what salary they're paying you. So entrepreneurship's a big incentive and in a market economy that you can be an entrepreneur. So that, that gives you the incentive. But um, the reason why command economies don't work is because you can't be an entrepreneur and there's no incentive to working in like a command economy.
So you were going through laissez-faire command system and market system. The five footnotes of questions, invisible hands, um, circle flow model, market system deals with risk. I will go through, get another activity. I'm just gonna share my screen. So what's called a free enterprise or capitalism? So, um, market economy. This economy has very little resources and it's hard to obtain all things for survival. What's that called? traditional economy. What's called, what's also called a planned economy. Command? Yeah, it's great. Ben and Nashville. Okay. Excellent. Pick up. Ben Nashville. Great. And then their primary economic goal is economic stability, but it is becoming more difficult to achieve as technology increases. What's that? This economy is found in North Korea, Cuba, and China. Communist governments of these nations own and control most businesses. What's that called? Mind economy? Yeah, who was that? Nashua. Nashua? Oh, him and you, okay. Great. Thanks. Great job. Excellent. Great job. And then a combination of command and market economies which provides goods and services. What's that called? Next, 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 yeah. Great, excellent. So, uh, 
Joshua. Who else got it? Oh, Addison did. Who else? Matt. Good job, everybody. And then it involves bartering, trading. What's that called? What type of economy? Market economy? Traditional. Traditional economy. Uh, traditional. That's okay. That's okay. Um, price is this. Uh, prices in this economy are determined by the supply and demand for goods. What's, what's that? That one should be market now. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's great. Good job. And then um, and Jolly. Okay. Yeah. And Cabler, right? Is that how you pronounce it? Let me know if I'm doing it wrong. Um, so a system in which production of goods and services is decided by central government, what's that called? Come on. Angelic. Yeah. Great job. Good job, everybody. And then the government determines what infrastructure will be built, passes laws putting many regulations upon private industry and the economic The most prosperous economic system, what's it called? Yeah, it's great. Capitalism, I accept too. So uh, Ben, Christine, um, everybody. And then indigenous people are the majority that use this economic system today. Economic system calls. Traditional. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's great. So then. Kami, then barter. I said barter to barter. Ashwa said barter. It's great. Good job, everybody. And then there are no one hundred percent free enterprise economies yet. The USA and Germany are close. Um, What's what's it called? What's their economy is called?
market economy. And then the government owns most of the resources and businesses that produce goods and services in the cycle. Command, command, command. That is some natural. Good job. And sure, and job. Great job, everybody. And then a system in which production of goods and services is decided by central government. Name Ben. Job. Then the oldest economic system in the world, what's called? Halloween. And Nashua. Uh, Christina's, not Christina's. Yeah. A system in which people grow their own food and make their own goods is called. Excellent job. Then the government decides what to produce, how much to produce, and what prices will be. Meme. Really mad. Nashua Christine Colleen, Nashua Christine. Um, and she Ben. And the government may own some industries while others belong to private owners. What, which one is that? Next. And then individuals and businesses are free to make, buy, and sell what they wish. Great job, everybody. And then name all four economic systems. Yeah, good job, everybody. And then the USA is this type of economy. And 
Next. Good try, good try though. Like that was a uh, good try. Uh, Kameem, Ben. Kameem, Ben. Good try everybody. Like um, it's a hard, um, that's a hard question there. The reason why is because it used to be like, yeah, so the reason why is because there's a mix of government and and private enterprise. So like there's certain government companies and then there's private companies. It's kind of like Canada, Canada's Canada Post, the LCBO that are government enterprises and then they have all the private companies. So both are mixed economies. A capitalist, um, yeah, free market is the same as market. Um, Sometimes people refer um, to the U.S. as market economy, but um, it depends on, like, it's more of a mixed economy. Um, there's no real market economies anymore. It's just, like, there's, there are private government. Like, some people say markets, some people say mixed, but um, I'd say mixed. Yeah. Name two out of the six economic goals. Just say like if any ones you can think of. Like they they probably aren't like there's there's a lot more than that. Yeah. Stability. Those are good. Yeah, keep going. Those all work. Keep going. You want you want the economy to be stable. You want it to be efficient. You want people to have quality. Quality. Those are good, yeah. They'll give everybody a point, it's great. Everybody. Excellent. And what are the fundamental economic questions? Three, fundamental. So there's, um, we studied about five of them. Uh, that were in the slides. Yeah, keep going, everybody. That's great. Good job, everybody. All um, I think we give everyone points. It's great. Excellent job, everybody. And then in a market economy, who owns the factors of production?
I'll give it to everybody. Good job, everybody. Great, great work today. Yeah. Um, excellent participation, everybody. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think Camille Ongan Camille won. I think Ben got second, and then. Nashville got third, but everyone did well. Great, great participation, excellent, excellent job, everybody. Um, the scoring might have been a bit off because uh, it's hard because uh, I was doing the scoring. Block gets a lot easier because it's like um, it's automatic scoring. But so great job, everybody. I'm just going to show you one last thing. Uh, so I'm going to just going to bring it up. So my last thing is just gonna share this. So here uh, I have so there's an extra credit assignment that um, I posted. So I'm gonna post extra credit assignments. Uh, almost every class. So it's it's extra credit for um, the semester. So you can get up to 10% more if you do these assignments uh, to the best of your ability. You can get up to 10% more on your grade. So, I mean, also it's good, it's good practice for you for this course. So I posted one and I'll let you, I'll give you the rest of the time to to write responses to the thing. Um, so in, until the rest of the class, but um, yeah, I'm gonna post those just as extra practice and also for you to get an extra 10% towards your grade if you do well on them. But uh, does anyone else have any questions for today or are you good? Um, Oh, you have unlimited time for the extra credit and the PDF. I I don't have one. Uh, the one that I have, I cannot um, copy. I can't download it. Um, there's protections on it, but um, you don't have to buy the textbook. The textbook's not required. Um, the yeah, mostly two chapters per week. Yeah, because there's about eighteen chapters in the. In the uh, in the course, but uh, yeah, I can. But anyone you want, like anyone, like any um, specific chapter that we're that you're struggling on, we'll focus on directly. Like we'll we'll go back to it and work on it, and I'll post the slideshows. I'll post it right now, and um, and like anyone who wants to speak to me can speak to me, um, like until the end of the class. Um, so, uh, so Melanie, you can speak to me like um, now. Uh, there's no deadline for the extra credit. It's about something I'd rather not everyone in class to hear. Okay, um, so I'll, um, okay, so yeah, uh, so like, uh, yeah, we can speak after then. Um, so I'll post the PowerPoints uh, right now. Uh, so they'll be under course documents. And then I'm gonna post, cause I'm doing, I'm putting together, um, I'm putting it together as a slideshow. Of, I'm, wait, so I recorded the lecture today. So I'll post that when it when it processes. So yeah, so that'll be in course documents. Yeah, so um so let's 
So, um, so does anyone else have any questions? Okay, so if, if you um, if you don't have any extra questions, um, so I posted that one, but I can. Um, I wasn't informed about any sort of. Uh, need for quizzes on connect um they didn't they didn't say it was a requirement um my course lead didn't uh didn't inform me of a requirement so um so yeah so like there's um at this point there's no um connect quizzes But I'll post practice material, and I'm gonna post. Um, I'm gonna have quizzes on Blackboard. Yeah. Yeah. So, like the the quizzes, the tests, the term tests, and the quiz, and the final exam, and uh, the material for extra credit will be on Blackboard. Um, and then I'll post any practice resources on Blackboard. Um, Uh, so I currently the quizzes I'll have to like I'm gonna have to speak to the course lead because I've not been informed about that. Um, so that's so that there's no plans for that right now. But I'm going to speak to the course, uh, the course administrator. Um, so, yeah, if, uh, whoever like if uh, so, um, yeah, if you don't have any more questions, then you can you can head out, um, or if you have questions, stay, and then I can talk uh, one on one. Um, yeah, just stay around if you do have more questions or, um, yeah. Thanks, you too. I'll put a bit on for you. Just so you know who you're talking to. Sure. But I don't care on or off. So I have a question for you though, Michael. So I did buy the textbook. Yeah. And I am debating whether or not to keep it or not because I didn't know the answer to pretty much anything you asked. Oh, can when, you like I know you went, you went. Okay. Can you rephrase like, I that? Have an, okay. I first of all, I have an LOA. Like I have a brain injury. Okay. A car accident way back in the day, so my memory is rubbish. So I was going to ask if there was any way if I do want to take want to get a refund for the textbook, if I could get the powerpoints before class so I could review them. Or if, uh, or do you think I should keep the textbook and use it as a second uh, information piece just to get more background information? Well, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that the brain injury. Um, I'll send you. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm sorry to hear about that. Uh, yeah. Like anything you need, um, yeah, I'll send you all the powerpoints right now. Um, like every single one until the end. Um, 
Yeah, I'll send it. Uh, so what's your email? Uh, should I use the university, the college one? Yeah. Okay, just M tell for three at ncstudents.niagaracollege.ca. Oh, could you type that if that's okay? Oh, okay. yeah, that's cool. Thanks. Y'all, um, I'm just gonna download because like anything you need, I'll send. Um, like I just want to make it easy so the students don't have to because I think buying the textbook is too expensive. Um, it's like hundred something dollars, but I'm going to under like my what I'm assuming is the reason it's so expensive is because they do thing. And I think that the teachers are connecting the online crap, which I really don't like using the uh, whole connect crap. I just yeah. put the my email in the chat. Right, y'all yeah, send it over. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, I'll provide you with anything you you need. Um, like okay. if you need um, like if you need extensions and any of that um, extra time, like I'll provide it to you because um it's like yeah like anything you do need help with yeah yeah like my like i you probably got for email of my loa as um my disabilities ladies as you sent about monday and it does have a list of accommodations there so i okay. try my best um uh, i'll let you i'll let you know ahead of time if i need something sure i'm uh I'm sending it right now. What what's your um who's the person you're talking about? The uh per the, the person who would so just who's supposed to send you my LOA, her name is Heather Stables. Um or I don't or I don't know if uh, just uh the disability people just send it like the if it's the uh, HWAS. I don't know who sends it exactly. I can send a copy of it though, because I have that to you if you want. Yeah, I'll I'll check. Um, because um, I don't I don't think I received it. I think yeah, I think it might have been sent to a different person. So yeah, it's um I'm loading it. Okay, great. Uh so let me know when you receive it. I got the uh, whole zip file. Great. Yeah, yeah, anything you do need, just let me know and I'll send it over. Okay. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, no, no problem. It a quick question for you though so your your quiz thing you do at the end is that based on stuff you went over during your lecture yeah okay so i'm not i don't quite feel as bad though because my memory is rubbish sorry oh it's okay yeah just um take your time i'm gonna make those into um they're gonna be more extra credit okay yeah more of an extra and, uh, thing. and i uh, ended up getting retrograde amnesia from it so that doesn't help the whole memory piece yeah uh, like don't worry don't worry you're gonna be fine just uh all um okay like any um like i'll give you the material and uh um any extra time any extra like you know um extensions you need thank, or thank, yeah thank you so much i'll no can you i'll send you back my loa again just in case you didn't get it and i Sounds good. don't remember what my pass my password is yes it's useless yeah i forget my password too <laughs> yeah it's uh i just forget mine mm, do that later where is there it is right there Mm. Mm -mm. 
Do you care what we address you have though? Like it. Oh no, no, no. it doesn't doesn't it doesn't matter. Like however. Okay. Um. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. Like personally, I'm like, dear, where is no what? Oh, there it is. No that. Sorry. Talk to myself. Okay. <sighs> Sorry, I was late too. I got distracted by some shenanigans. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Life, life happens, right? Yeah. And they recorded that, which is great. So I'm going to distribute it from the start. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, um, so I'm, I'll, uh, it'll take, um, it'll take probably an hour to uh, process it. And once, once it's processed, yeah. um, yeah, uh, probably tomorrow morning I'll have it up. But yeah. yeah. No rush. Have a good day there. I just sent the uh, thing of a booger. Sure. Just forward it to you. Cool, I got it. It's got, uh, it, it just has like everything attached to it because I was just like, you know what? I don't feel like going through that right now. Sorry. I sent everything. Okay, yeah, I'm reading it. Um, it wasn't sent to me because it was sent to the wrong email. Um, yeah. It was sent to um, M. Johnson instead of M. I. Johnson. Um, that was what happened. Mm. But yeah, um, yeah, once we're on campus again, um, just let me know, like, um, like seven days before the exam, uh, like yeah, yeah, uh, sounds good. And then like I know, like even now, I'm supposed to email. Like if we do them online, I have to email you so that you can do the time modification. So and like use Kurzweil, okay. So like um yeah yeah like uh any like Google read and write Kurzweil, any of that stuff that you need while you're doing the test. Um, yeah, that's, that's perfectly fine. So, uh, anything else? Uh, okay, so, okay, quick question for you, though. It's it. I know it's, I know that there the, I know that the, yeah, I can't speak English. I know that the, lectures are recorded but like my note-taking ability is like really really bad so is it cool if I record the lectures and send them to the note people and then they do the notes for me yeah it's that's, that's great I can't remember what it's called the note thing but they use it at Mohawk Yeah, yeah, I think um, transcription. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I'll. Um, okay. Yeah, once. Um, yeah, once. Uh, once we're done this, I'll, I'll upload it and then um, you'll be able to transcribe it. Um, I know that. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, so. Um, yeah, once once we're off the call, um, I'll it'll process. I'll no rush on it. it though. I'm going to get dinner anyway, probably fart okay. around and go to bed. <laughs> Sounds but, good. Yeah, I'm probably not gonna get to back to this until tomorrow morning. Okay, so. cool. Good. Sounds I've good. Little, I've got two classes back to back, so. Okay. Yeah, me too. I was the top yeah. four. Yeah. 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 Anyway, thank you so much for chatting with me afterwards, Mike. I much appreciate it. Is it Michael or Mike? Do you want to? Do oh, it doesn't matter. Whatever, whatever you prefer. Okay, I apologize for calling Mike. I have a friend called Mike, so. Okay. so have a great night, and thanks for chatting with me and sending me all the PowerPoint. That was much appreciated. No problem. Yeah, take care. All right. Now have a great rest of your night. You too. Ciao.